What's going on, Doobots? Happy New Year. Uh, this is the 2021 predictions video. I did one last year. Uh, some was accurate, some wasn't. That's why they're called predictions, because I don't know. Same thing I'm doing this year. This year I, I have a little bit less to go on, a little bit less of an understanding. So you're going to have to hang out with me on like twitch.tv slash Tony Scongeli or here on YouTube to get my up to the minute predictions of what I think are going to happen. Regardless, let's talk about what I suspect will happen. I've basically broken it down into four quarters. Uh, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, four, three month intervals. I went a little bit more detailed. I broke it down based on how like, I think the patches are going to work, but there's no science behind it. It was just like patches are usually about a month and a half or 45 days long. So I went ahead and just kind of broke the entire calendar down into 45 day uh, groupings and here's where we are uh, you know for example we are right now in uh, January of 2021 which is still part of the very large patch from the end of last year so what do I expect to see from January of 2021 I expect to see uh, battle pass seasons the return of the Emma milestone and I'm still expecting to see an orb event this month January um, so I don't know uh, if that's going to happen or when, but these are things that we've been kind of led to believe are going to happen. So I put them there just to keep up with uh, appearances. Uh, second, we have the next patch coming out. Uh, it is almost confirmed to be the legendary event for Jubilee. And then I believe there's some other things people are speculating based on data mines. If it's speculated based on data mines already, it's not really a prediction. Um, I don't need to set the tone for it, so maybe we're getting characters like Bishop and White Tiger. I don't know. Maybe. But what I do think is going to happen is the Scarlet Witch and Vision rework finally going to happen. Um, they both are kind of homeless in their teams. Uh, as a result of that, it's very likely we might, in that same rough amount of time, receive a character that fills the slot for Scarlet Witch on the Supernatural team. The entire Supernatural team is supposed to kind of change into a very different version of the team. It's going to line up with how Doctor Strange is going to work and a bunch of other characters. Uh, it always kind of felt a little weird that Doctor Strange and Mordo are uh, in the same conversation as like Elsa Bloodstone and Ghost Rider. They're going to make the split. Supernatural is going to be a bit of a different kind of character team throughout as the year goes on. Um, that's what I'm expecting for the next patch. Obviously, there's going to be characters. Uh, Scarlet Witch and, and Vision aren't necessarily characters. They're just reworks. So it could be anything. Um, and again, we already talked that it might be Bishop and White Tiger for like January to February. We'll see. Then we have February to March. Again, there expect to be some characters. I don't have any reason to, to suspect which characters they'll be in those uh, part of the month. So throw it out there. What I do suspect is that we get ISO 8 rank 2, which was the uh, game plan for releasing ISO 8s. Now, ISO 8, just to let everybody know, ISO 8 has a plan to go up to rank 5. Um, in the same way that we are supposed to have 5 eventual ranks of uh, gear tiers, where it's green, blue, purple, yellow, and then eventually red. Red being its own special thing, we'll get into that later. Um, that's the same kind of setup that ISOs are supposed to make. ISOs are a progression system. You're supposed to be able to progress all the way up from green to blue, inevitably purple, and each ISO system will come with it a, a flat 10% boost in, in stats, you know, two for each tier up, uh, and will become progressively more difficult. ISO rank two is very likely to be shown sometime in March, as for three, four, and five, that is a little bit harder to predict. You can't just necessarily be like, well, ISO 8 1 came out here and 2 came out four months later. So, four months from there, maybe they might be uh, rushing, it might be faster because it's something that they believe the average player might uh, want to get access to earlier. They might uh, extend it because the average player might not spend a lot of money or time or effort or get kind of burned out by trying to farm this material that is very slow coming. We'll see. We, I can't really predict. I know that we will eventually see more ISOs. I don't know when. Uh, and then the introduction of the Season Milestone Orb. Um, I don't think that we're going to get the Seasonal Milestone Orb in March. 
necessarily, or at the beginning of March, February, March, I think that we're going to be told about specifics of it, and then we'll get it uh, at the beginning of the next milestone. So Emma's milestone, this is her last pass in January. We're going to have about a month off, give or take, from, you know, almost the entirety of, from the end of that event to the beginning of the next one, before the next milestone event starts, which we'll go into in quarter two. Uh, I think we're going to start getting real information about the seasonal milestone orb, if we don't already have it. But more importantly, we're going to get information regarding the Seasonal Milestone Orb in regards to who the next Seasonal Milestone character is around the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, the other thing I will say for quarter one that I'm predicting, things that I believe are happening this year and I believe are happening earlier. Uh, outfits, costumes, skins, whatever you want to call it, we're getting them this year. Yes, we are. That is a fact. I think we're getting them earlier because between a couple of leaks that have happened and some internal documents that someone may or may not have seen and shared with somebody who's doing a YouTube video right now. Um, I've seen them start referring to costumes and skins as we've been talking about as outfits more and more commonly. What does that mean? I don't know. Are they going to change the character kit? I don't know. Are they going to change the character tag? I don't know. Are they going to be pretty? I assume. I don't know. I assume they're trying to get costumes out as early as possible because Originally, I believe the plan for Battle Pass was to have costumes be the drawing feature and not just random character shards. We'll see. Um, but I expect outfits to be a part of the early 2000, I'm sorry, 2021 calendar. The other thing I expect to see is the Ravager rework. But Tony, what about the hand rework? Don't worry, the hand rework was never coming, so, uh, or in a reasonable time. Uh, if anything, it's going to come around a specific event, like a Halloween event or something, like I said last year during my predictions video, but the hand rework was never on the table until recently. Now the hand rework is, uh, has something that's going to happen, we'll get to that later. The Ravager rework is something that has been uh, planned for a while. As a matter of fact, they have uh, built characters out for the rest of the Ravagers, and I'm not saying specifically Taserface, even though I know everyone wants him, but... They have built out specific characters to make the Ravagers a complete team, the same way they did with AIM and the Mercenaries and Hydra and pretty much everybody but hand at this point. The Ravager rework is uh, ready to go, uh, and it stands to reason that if you ever see a lull in what's happening or you imagine that like, oh gee, I wonder what next characters are coming out, expect there to be one or two characters added with the Ravager tag. Um, and the Ravagers themselves receiving a giant rework so that you can have another war defense or offense team because that's basically the way the game flows. You take characters that no one cares about, you rework them to be a viable war defense team or in some state offense team uh, and then you get a whole bunch of value out of people buying a character and taking characters they've had but never worked on and working them up. So expect to see a Ravager rework early next year. Now, Moving to quarter two, it's your March, April, and May, maybe a little bit of June, based on how the, the patches work. We're going to have um, the U.S. Agent Rogue and Gambit patch. Um, that's a thing. A U.S. Agent was the underscore agent character everyone was wondering about. Um, if you don't believe me, come back here when it comes out uh, and see the video of me saying it, because it is. It's U.S. Agent. Uh, that's a tie-in with the... Captain, uh, sorry, Falcon and Winter Soldier, it always was going to be. But Rogue and Gambit are separate. They were supposed to be sort of a uh, Valentine's Day style event. So it still could be end of February, beginning of March type event. I don't believe that the milestone will start. So we might get something like Gambit early in uh, like end of February and then Rogue be announced as the milestone character. I have reason to believe Rogue is the next milestone character. Can it be Gambit? Yes. Am I saying it now? Yes. Is anyone going to come to me and be like, Tony, you said it was Rogue, but it was Gambit. You're wrong. Yes. And those people are stupid. And I hope bad things happen to their family. Other than that, uh, this is just general prediction stuff. Anyway, I expect to see Rogue or Gambit, but probably Rogue as the milestone character. Uh, Gambit himself is just a great character all around. So it's very likely to see him as some kind of uh, blitz or camp. Not campaign's a little too good for Gambit. Some kind of blitz or spend money kind of character moving to april and may expect to see some more upgrades we passed on it the entire 2020 because of covid we covid was a very weird year as come as far as content is concerned or 2020 because of covid 
we didn't get a lot of content. What we got was a lot of uh, planned content and a lot of characters, but a lot of the tie-ins didn't happen. So uh, the Black Widow tie-in that was supposed to happen early of last year didn't happen until December of last year because the Black Widow movie didn't come out, so nobody was interested in who Red Guardian or Yelena was. Taskmaster came out, but nobody else did. Suffice it to say, because a whole bunch of with the Eternals, stuff like that, these things didn't happen, therefore uh, we didn't get them. It stands to reason that no one shell-shocked by uh, the national or the global pandemic anymore, and that people have planned around having that global pandemic. So I don't believe that video games or movies are currently going to have the same year they had last year, so I believe that things that are planned are going to come to fruition, especially the things that were supposed to happen last year. They're going to be reworked a little bit. One of those things is the War Room upgrades and any new raids they plan on introduce. War Rooms, you've seen forever. There's tiny little buttons that say upgrade on top of a War Room. They've been there since the beginning. It says coming soon. How soon is soon? Well, soon for me is about April or May of 2021. As for new raids, um, they've been adding sliders to raids. And when I say new raids, I'm being intentionally vague. Do I mean Ultimus 8? Yeah. I do. Uh, Ultimus 7 is... I know it's difficult for a lot of people, but keep in mind that the game is always designed to keep the people at the highest power in the game continuously interested, and more and more people at the highest power in the game are incredibly bored with how easy the Ultimus 7 raids are, even insofar that the change of sliders to the... Um, uh, Greek raids have not added any more difficulty or challenge to that game. So people are getting bored. Expect to see not only a new uh, actual raid, uh, but now that ISO 8s have come out and that we have uh, a larger character pool and they're breaking things down more into seasonal characters and stuff like that. Now that that's happening, now you can expect to see probably a little bit uh, more of like a Delta raid, another uh, Greek raid, which I've been talking about for anyone on my stream for a long time because there's always been plans for one. It just never kind of came out. This way, the raid cycle would be two months, you know, two like for one, one month is two raids, one month is two raids. You can kind of flow it and it's an even number as opposed to the three cycle, which kind of gets a little wonky. Uh, then moving to the last, we have May, June. We have the new legendary, uh, of course, more mutants. That's kind of a tongue-in-cheek joke because there's always going to be more mutants and they're always going to come in a pile. But there's one I left blank here. Um, this is kind of weird, and it could be earlier, but I think we're getting the... Um, I think we're getting a new orb. Or not necessarily a new orb, but a, an addition to an orb. I think we're getting the Legacy 2 orb, uh, which will have a, a pool of characters in it that, uh, very much like the Legacy 1, were available in the second year of the game. Now again, this could be earlier. I'm really just kind of putting this more as a... Uh, it should happen sometime around quarter two, as opposed to it's going to happen exactly on this time, uh, with the other thing I think is going to happen sometime around quarter two, which is Dark Dimension 5. Why? Because uh, Ultimus and Ultron need red stars. They don't need them, but they're, they need to be finished. Um, I would imagine that Dark Dimension 5, in the same exact vein as Dark Dimension 1 and Dark Dimension 3, is going to be some stupid thing that they do that gives you garbage that doesn't matter, but ultimately access to red stars on a character like Ultron, or the ability to finish off the red stars on your Doctor Doom, or your um, uh, Ultimus, are probably high up on their priority. So that's my expectation for Do Dark Dimension 5, sometime in quarter 2 of 2021. That's pretty much it. Moving to quarter three, I have less and less information because obviously the further out things are, the less easy it is to uh, have concrete plans and it's more like abstract ideas. They might have the characters planned to be released around this time, like the legendary, who is it? I don't know. Could it be Blade? Maybe. I know Blade is probably coming out in September, so it does kind of line up with that general idea. Um, but could you know it's possible i don't believe blade is a legendary 
but I do believe that. I do believe there's a couple of characters in the legendary pool. I think Mephisto is a legendary character coming. I think Modok is a legendary or a milestone character coming. We don't know yet. The next milestone character is probably not coming out until this time anyway. So quarter three, we have Shang-Chi for the tie-in with the movie. Probably the Mandarin, not necessarily a legendary character, although he could be. Um, and a couple of other character tie-ins with Shang-Chi. Now Shang-Chi is going to be the return of the martial artist tag that they took away uh, to be more specific. That's why they removed it. They didn't remove it because it was useless. They removed it because they had a plan for it. And don't let them tell you otherwise. Uh, there'll be another orb milestone event. Uh, because if, especially if they don't have an orb milestone event in this month, they're just going to push it back to about mid season. Like they did last year. I expect to see another orb milestone event soon. I expect to see one six months from today. Uh, that's when I expect to see that kind of stuff. Um, the Lex legendary character, it, like I said, it could be quite anybody. So just expect around the end of quarter three, which is, uh, July, August, September, expect to start like getting hype about a legendary like we did with Doc Ock, even though Doc Ock wasn't necessarily that hype. And then this is where I expect the hand rework to come in. Um, spoilers, uh, it's very likely to see the hand in the Shang-Chi movie, because it's a movie about martial arts, and the hand is a uh, martial art-based villainy team. So expect to see uh, that kind of thing with the rework of the martial art tag with Shang-Chi and a bunch of other stuff. Moving to the end of the year, uh, expect Blade and Morbius... Um, as another addition to the Supernatural team. Expect the final version of Supernatural team to look something like Blade, Morbius, Ghost Rider, uh, Elsa Bloodstone, and a character that we have not yet named. Uh, maybe a Mephisto? Maybe someone really, really, really powerful? That's my guess, because Doctor Strange is moving a little bit differently with the Doctor Strange Mordo kit. You're probably going to see Vision... Uh, Scarlet Witch and Agatha Harkness, a character I expect to be seeing uh, shortly. Uh, and then, of course, the Doctor Strange movie comes out in 2022, which might give you a little bit more options as far as the multiverse of characters come out. Uh, there's one other note I have in Dark Dimension. It's just Spider-Verse. The reason it's just Spider-Verse is threefold. One, uh, Spider-Verse is basically printing money. If they decide to release uh, any Spider-Man character or symbiote character, or a character that met Spider-Man once in a crossover that people are like, I know that guy, it's going to make a ton of money. Beetle is a Spider-Man villain we might see. Sinister Six characters. Spider-Verse, I don't know if there will be some, some Spider-Verse characters peppered throughout Quarter 1, Quarter 2, and Quarter 3. It's very likely because they just tend to release characters whenever they think it makes sense. But I'm telling specifically, Quarter 4 will have a big Spider-Verse impact. There will be uh, either an additional symbiote, or uh, an like Spider Gwen, some major character. And of course, I left November and December blank because we don't know anything about November and December. If I had to guess, I would do the same thing: some kind of orb event, maybe a notification of a miles of a, of a legendary that's coming out next year, um, whatever. But I do think that at some point we're going to see Dark Dimension Six, which will be next big dumb monster animal. Uh, that's it as far as like specific information. I have a couple of generic pieces of uh, information for you guys to expect for 2021. The first is Mephisto. I've heard quite a bit about him, uh, so I'm expecting that this is the year to be. I don't know anything about him. I don't know if he's a milestone, if he's a legendary, if he's a battle pass. I don't know. I have no understanding. I don't know what... I know Mephisto's a powerful character, but I've heard a lot about him being added to the game. Therefore, I expect to see Mephisto at some point this year. Hulk characters. Finally, the Hulk will get some love in bringing in characters like the Abomination leader. And I don't remember who the last character was. I don't think it was Doc Samson, even though I wish it was. I don't remember. Finally, the Hulk characters, they found like a kind of little gap where they can make it work. Obviously, somewhere in the long lines of the of a war defense team, uh, which will, might come with a rework of characters like the Hulk and She-Hulk. I don't know, but they're uh, going in. So the change to legendary releases, this is kind of due in part to the fact that uh, Nick Fury was supposed to be retired last year and wasn't. They just didn't have the planning to do so. Um, instead of just retiring Nick Fury, we might see a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes type event where a certain number of the legendary characters that exist are just perma-retired. That's it. Um, which 
perma retired for those who don't know means like the Iron Man treatment. The character will be placed in a point where you can always access them. Uh, it might be three star, might be five star. They might raise the star. They might. I, I don't know. That information is is going to be a, a ballpark decision. Just to remind you, uh, for all of the ideas that people want to believe that this is a company well run, they're not. They're people who are just making shit up as it goes along. So they might have a fully serviced plan of what they're going to do or they might give you five red stars on ultimus because they think that's a viable reward because they didn't decide on it until five minutes before it went live who knows the point is they're going to change the legendary release structure so that some of the older legendaries your star wars your magnetos your your um nick furies they aren't uh part of a cycle this way they have more room for legendary cycles without uh, feeling like there's a legendary every six minutes and uh, allowing players the opening start that they feel comfortable with. So if you wanted to start the game and start working on Magneto, you're more than welcome to, that kind of thing. The last is the completion of teams. I'm specifically mentioning the Marauders and Young Avengers because I specifically know the Marauders have another character coming out with the Marauder tag and the Young Avengers have another character coming out with the Young Avenger tag. What character? Don't know. Can I guess? Yes, I can. Marauders are supposed to have Sunspot or Sunfire. Said that for a long time. Hasn't come out yet. Still supposed to. Young Avengers was supposed to be Stature. Still supposed to get the Young Avengers tag. Um, but there's supposed to be another Young Avenger character coming out. More of a tie-in as something else. Don't know when it's going to come. But that's it. A lot of the teams that have four characters. And before anyone says, but Tony, Emma's a Marauder. No, Emma's used on the Marauders. Emma has a home. Uh, right around here where I have more mutants in May, you might start getting wink wink nudge nudge a little bit more information about what Emma's home might look like. But uh, in general speak, generally speaking, um, the, the characters teams tend to do have a full set of characters. Fantastic Four now has six characters you can pull from. Uh, Marauders will go, are going to have a specific team that you can either use with your Emma or you can remove a character like Mystique or Sabretooth depending on how the kit works out um so that a lot of teams that aren't complete will become complete by that time um that's pretty much everything as far as that's concerned so that's it for my predictions of 2021 um this is again january uh, 1st this is recorded so uh, or january 2nd rather this is being recorded so hopefully uh when you look at this video in the future and you go tony is wrong about this it's like well i only had some information and hopefully anytime i was right about something you would have the exact same zeal and uh earnesty to remind people that i was right about it uh, i know that's not true that's wishful thinking but i have a lot of wishes and hopes for this coming year hopefully you do as well i want you guys to have a good night have a great day comment below and let me know if you're excited about anything i predicted or if you're excited about stuff i haven't predicted or if you just want the hand rework already uh and i will catch you guys later.